Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? I have been a bit of a busy boy. The combine is back down here and it's all parked away over there. I've brought this one back down and, well I say back down, I've actually taken it up to field 6 and field 1. I've parked a few things up there. I have planted field 6 with grass. Field 1, the harvest is completely finished. That trailer there is now completely full of beans. Uh, can we see them? Yep, there we go. There's all the beans. And if I just move over a little bit, I can jump. There you go. Look at all those beans. Loads and loads of beans. So we're going to be selling those later. This plough, we're returning this one. And if we go here, you can't actually do anything there. But I've said that since we bought this one, we'll be using it to return anything that can be returned. So if I now go into here and I go to garage and I go to... Uh, this is least items. I want the least items and there, that one. So we return the plow. Yes. Okay. And back out. Now we've got that seed drill there and the cultivator in there that we own both of those. We can return both of those and sell them because we've now got another cultivator and a seed drill. Um, but first of all, I'm going to do some fertilizing. We're going to start by fertilizing this field here. And I'm just going to put the hired help going on this and then have a chat about last week's question. I was asking you last week about which truck you wanted me to get, which lorry. Um, lorry, if you're like me, you live in Europe, and a truck or semi, big rig, um, it, it tends to depend on where you're from in the States, I understand, as to what exactly you call it, because I have a lot of people telling me, oh, we don't call it a big rig here, we call it a semi. Or no, we don't call it a semi unless it's... Uh, hooked up to a certain vehicle or something um, and so yeah there's, there's lots and lots of variety on it but generally we'll just refer to it as a truck while we're here in Goldcrest I think and then uh, hopefully everybody will know just what I'm talking about. Uh, oop, too far over let me just come back over this way a bit. Find if I do it like this uh, well it should that's not going to do it there nope it's still too far over. Over a little bit further now we got it, right over to the edge of the field. It will probably get down there and it will probably try to turn left. Um, so I gave you a choice of five trucks last week. There was the, the Tatra, the Man, the 415, the SX310 and the SX210. I'll show you in just a second as soon as we get down here. And I had several people saying, um, some of those are European trucks and this is a US map, so really you should be doing US trucks. And... In part, I agree, but in part, I disagree. Now, the man, you've actually got quite a few dealerships for a man truck in the States, although I believe they're actually shaped more like these two here, um, like the SX210 and the TX415 and that one there, um, with the, the long nose on them. Um, the, um, the old Kenworth trucks from the 60s were built to look like this, but now most trucks that are produced in the United States are actually produced to look like this but that's not to say all of them you do still get trucks that look like that um, and the big thing about it is like the man trucks and so on you do have dealerships um, all over the states you've got dealerships for Volvo for Scania um, and there's a few others as well but actually the Tatra truck there is no dealership for that in the US there is one dealership for Tatra in South America, which is a fair way away from where you are, um, and then there's a few in Europe. And But there was a few years ago, a few Tatra trucks were under a license, were exported in a large group to the States. Now they were predominantly used for military use, uh, but not all of them were used for military use, uh, it was just predominantly. But they weren't actually branded as Tatra. They had the badges changed, and they also had the engines changed as well. They had the the um, the Tatra uh, diesel air cooled engine removed, and they had a Cummins. Um, it was a Cummins diesel engine was put in instead, uh, which was a turbo diesel engine, um, and then they were rebranded as ATC trucks. And incidentally, the San Diego Fire Department. They actually had one of those ATC trucks. There were only about 900 of them imported into the US. And the San Diego Fire Department, they had one of them as one of their fire trucks. I don't know if they still got it, but they definitely did have it. 
most of the ATC trucks that were um, done were actually for military use. And um, I worked on a farm that had some old army surplus um, amphibious vehicles. They were, I did think they were a 6x6, but I've got a feeling they were actually 8x8. Four wheels down each side, amphibious vehicles, and they used to use them for all sorts of stuff. They were really powerful, compact machines, absolutely fantastic. So it is, it's not unusual to find um, ex-army machines being used on farm. So, I mean, I'm going through all of this because, quite frankly, the, the results were... I was surprised. I've got to be honest, I was a little bit surprised. Um, I'll just show you in here. We had 2,684 votes in total, right? That's a huge number of votes. The Lizard SX210, which I understand, I think that one is supposed to be like a Peterbilt, and this one is... Yeah, I can't remember what this one's supposed to be. Um, but it's another popular US make. Um, that one had a total of 41 votes. Out of 2,684, that one had 41 votes. The modified um, lizard over here, the SX310 TriStar, I think it's supposed to be, uh, with the extra axle on, that one had 209 votes. Then you had the lizard here, the TX415, that one had 276 votes. So again, not very popular, out of 2,684 votes. The man truck did marginally better with 421, but overall, everybody shouted loud and clear, they want this Tatra 6x6 aggro truck. They want this one here, which is a 462 horsepower vehicle, 1,737 votes for that truck. So I think it is loud and clear that everybody wants that. I hope that I've addressed some of the concerns about um, just how realistic it would be. It would be unusual, right? I'm not... I'm not uh, saying it wouldn't be. It would definitely be unusual to see one of these on a farm in the US. However, it's not completely out of the question. It's not something that would never happen. It's just something that's unusual. I'm going to let that one carry on a minute and I will finish this field and get it started over on the field over there so that we can make sure that all our fertilizer is done. Then I'm going to head over to the, the dealership with the Challenger and the seed drill that I got on that I want to sell, and we will see about buying our new truck. Okay, just very quickly, I'm looking at this wondering why it's stopped, and then I realize it's actually, whilst I've been yakking away, it's actually gone on a growth stage. Um, so we got one stripe up through with the fertilizer, but if you have, actually have a look, field 14 is fully fertilized with three lots. Um, yeah, I didn't actually expect that at all. I missed that. So there we go. I'll set this one going and then I'll meet you at the dealership. Right, here we go. And it looks like our fertilizer has already finished. I suspect that it hasn't. I suspect that he's actually taking the wrong turn. Although this tractor is fairly slow. So I will go and check on that in a little bit just to make sure that it's all worked okay. And unhitch that one there. Um, before I go any further, my weekly question. Now... I am planning at some point to do some forestry. I'm going to spend a whole week doing a whole load of forestry work. I was thinking about hiring a wood chipper and we'll um, sort of use that as well, but I'm not sure at the moment. Because we're planning on planting all of field one with poplar trees, I probably won't go for wood chips. We'll probably handle whole logs. So I'm going to get a Scorpion King, the Ponzi Scorpion King. Now, this, I know that we have said that we're going to buy the drivable vehicles. I won't be buying this one. I will just lease it. I will spend about a week, maybe even uh, four or five episodes, sort of dedicated to forestry. We're going to have just a big chunk of it um, and do a whole load of forestry. So I'll use the Scorpion King. Um, we will lease it and we'll chop down a big load of trees. I don't quite know where yet. Um, and there's a few other mods that I will use as well to try them out. Um, I won't show you what all of them are at the moment, but uh, there are a couple of mods I would like to test out. But what my main quest, my actual question this week is, you've got the Flegel Timber Runner here where you've got to um, tip stuff into it. Now, there is a mod, I believe, that the mod has now been converted to FS17. Um, I really hope it has. I haven't actually checked it out. But it's basically this one with uh, um, an auto load, right? It's got the um, the auto load script added to it. Well, I think we used it somewhere. Uh, did 
Did we use it on Melbury Estate? I can't remember now, but I've definitely used the auto load trailer in FS15 and I thought it was very, very cool. So my question is quite simply, do you want me, when I do my week of forestry work, do you want me to use an auto load trailer or do you want me to deal with all the logs and um, however we're going to do it without using any kind of auto load script? Um, there is one other that I want to show you. Um, and that is this mod here, the Log Fork Duo. This one is very, very cool, and I've actually used this in the upcoming time lapse series. I will be using this one if we do some logging work on this map. Um, and it, what it does is not only is it really easy to pick up logs compared to that, that one is just awful. That one is terrible. You cannot pick stuff up on the level ground, uh, small logs anyway. It just doesn't seem to work at all. I could not get on with it. I hate that log fork with a passion. This one here, however, I found that I could pick up logs normally without any trouble at all, but it also has tension straps. And what you can do is you just open it and you put it over the logs. You can um, turn the tension straps on and it grabs hold of the logs and you can pick them up like that. It's a very, very cool mod. It just makes the job easier. You'll see it in the time lapse on Wednesday and I hope that you really enjoy that. Um, but yeah, the, so basically I've got all of these different mods that I'm lining up ready to use for some forestry work because I think it's going to be great fun. Um, so the question is, and sorry to keep repeating myself, I'm aware that I'm actually doing that now. Um, I'm, do you want me to get an autoload timber runner? Yes or no to autoload. It's your vote, it's your game. Don't forget to mouse over up here and actually cast your vote. There should have been a card come up and head into the comment section down below. Let us know what you think about this one and it is also today's topic of conversation, whether or not um, using an autoload trailer for logging is acceptable. I know I said that previously. Let's just sell this one, $7,135, excellent. Um, I did ask you previously if you thought that um, autoload straw trailers was acceptable and the general message I got was that most people did like the idea of an autoload um, straw trailer, so I was quite pleased about that. Uh, right, I want to get this plow. That's forty. Oh, actually, we we're just going to lease this one, aren't we? So that's going to be five thousand dollars. So we'll lease that one. But before I do that, I want to just see how much the truck is going to cost us. So we're getting the Phoenix Agro truck now, because it's most likely going to be a um, army surplus one. We really don't want the kind of the turquoisey color. We'd want an army surplus color, and I would guess because we can't do multiple colors. Um, you really want like a, a either a dark grey um, or like a dark greeny colour. I would say something like that would actually be a suitable colour for an army surplus colour. The grey rims would be fine. I would think or maybe you'd go for black rims. Um, it is costing us a little bit more doing this, but I think that's acceptable. And we will add the back attacher as well because the back attacher I found is absolutely priceless. So um, we'll go for like an an ex-army kind of colouring. I know that the colours do vary a little bit. You do get brown, uh, you know, some brownish vehicles and grey, um, and then the dark greens. Um, I don't think you can customise colours at all. You can't. So we will go for those colours. It's not the most appealing, but I feel that that is sort of the most realistic that we can approach. For. So we're going to buy that one hundred and forty thousand dollars. Well, one hundred and forty thousand and five hundred dollars. Absolute fortune and then we're going to go for the plow here and we're going to lease this jimper here um get that one lease yes yeah, so that leaves us with just six thousand dollars um great demand at pacific grain for corn we don't have any corn so that's no good to us and let's take a look that does actually look like army surplus that looks like an ex army vehicle with the black rims and the dark green i'm pleased that that does actually represent to me an army, army surplus vehicle. I'm, I'm pleased with that. Let's just jump in and try it a minute. Okay, just have a look round and see what the visibility is like. You've got the big robust tanks on the back there. Um, a lot of trucks actually have the tank. Do you see down the bottom where it says Tatra there over the where the exhaust manifold comes out? Um, a lot of trucks actually have um, the fuel tanks down there this one doesn't the fuel tank is up above it's um out of the way it's less likely to get damaged up there than it is down the bottom that is excellent the air tank is down low i have previously um with 
a old truck that we had for converted for agricultural use we did have a problem with the air tanks for the truck being down here one of them got damaged by a stone being flicked up by the front wheel um, but generally speaking I would say that this is a very good it's a robust well thought out configuration the air intake for the engine is also high up this vehicle could comfortably submerge right up to the door handles on the door underwater and it wouldn't affect it at all so you could drive through very deep water and mud with this one and it would handle it absolutely beautifully take a quick look in cab and this to me feels strange because it's the um the wrong side the steering is on the wrong side for me however because this is a european brand and not a uk brand it's actually how they would have all been made i don't think you would get a tatra with right hand drive so let's start this bad boy up a minute Fairly quiet, it's a nice hiss of the brakes and everything as it starts up. It's quite realistic. Outside of the cab, what options have we got? Can we lift up one of those axles? It doesn't look like you can lift axles. We can turn the beacons on so you can have beacons on for when you're towing heavy stuff, which is a nice little touch. I quite like that. Um, and that's about it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to worry about this truck for just a minute because there's some other things that I want to do with it as well. I'm going to, let's just hop into the Challenger and see what this plough is like. I'd like to take this plough up the field one and get started on ploughing the field. We're just going to make a start and then we're going to leave the hired help to carry on with that field because that is going to take ages to get done. Um, so let me just back up here and put that one on. Big old plough that is and there's no other way to carry this one apart from like we are. So we're going to have to be very, very careful about traffic and other issues with that. Um... I better turn my beacons on. And right, there's a car coming down there. Nothing that way. Right, let's go. We want to head across here and then we're going to turn left at the bottom of the hill here. Um, at the first intersection. And then we can go, it's a straight line then, straight up to field one. Um, where we'll be able to get started on our ploughing. There's a little tiny bit of ploughing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, um, just... <laughs> just just pretend that I'm not driving down the road, sweeping all the road signs off. Um, this thing is very, very wide. I should have an escort vehicle for this. Um, if I was doing this right, if you were travelling... I, well, I don't know about the US. I'm assuming that it's the same in the US as it is in the UK. If you're travelling with a wide load like this, you must have an escort vehicle. You must have someone driving in front of you to slow down traffic, especially on narrow roads... Um, with a big sign on the front that says caution, slow, wide vehicle approaching, something along those lines, and you must have beacons on all over the place um, and generally just alert, alert other road users to the issue. Um, I'm assuming that it's the same in the US and in other countries. Um, I talk, I'm talking about the US a lot, mainly because we are in the US on this map, so um, I'm not sort of excluding any other countries right i've just <laughs> yeah um y you see what i mean so our escort here he would have gone on ahead I've, I've just knocked over another road sign this is an absolute disaster um i've done escort duty i would have gone on ahead there i would have gone to the other side of the bridge at the intersection there and i would have stopped all the traffic and then allowed the large vehicle to come through and then after the large vehicle had come through i would have been very courteous to the other drivers i've had to interrupt their driving i've had to stop them from driving on the road i would have been courteous i would have thanked them and then i would move on again and then i move on to the next area that is likely to cause a problem for a wide vehicle traveling and then i would stop all traffic again and you you basically you've got to be good at interacting with the public when you're doing that job because if you're not good at interacting with the public you can you can really really upset people a lot um, and you don't want to do that. Um, you want to stay on the right side of the public. Now, I was actually thinking of what, uh, making this field bigger. We're widening all the way round. I'm not going to do that first. I will come back and I will do that another time. Because I've got so many other things that I want to get done, we might actually, well, we might do it later on. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plough the majority of the field. And then afterwards, we will think about um, coming back and possibly going around and making the field larger. And we'll get that uh, roller and square it up again nicely when we've finished. Uh, we can do that at the end. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to plow one line along the bottom of the field here and then I'm going to nip up the other end and I'm going to do one line along the top and then I'm just going to leave the hired help working away on this field. And that is going beautifully. The tractor doesn't seem to be struggling a lot. It's working very well. I'm quite pleased with that. I think that is that is quite good. And then before we go, I've still got time. I think there's a couple of other things that I want to do as well. Okay, this truck is officially a thing of beauty. It handles well. It sounds good as it travels along. Um, I'm generally, I'm quite impressed with this truck. I'm now going to find out how strong this truck is. I'd like to sell some grain. I'm actually, when I say sell some grain, I actually mean I'm going to sell all of the grain that we have, which is the beans that we got from field one and then all of the wheat that we have in storage. Because we're going to be getting cattle before we get pigs, I'm not concerned about storing any grain. And quite simply, I don't want to wait for any sales or anything like that. I want to just get on and sell the grain that we've got in order to make as much money as possible. Um, mainly because I'd like to get a robot for the sheep. If you take a look at the sheep a second, um, they're not clean at all. I don't want to, I can't be bothered to go up there and clean them all the time. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to get a robot to keep the cleanliness up so that that goes up to 100%. And we need to buy more fertilizer, all of which requires money and we don't currently have any money. Now I've got a back attacher on this one, so I am curious to see how it's going to work with this trailer. And as soon as we've got this one hitched up and we've sold these beans, I am getting rid of this trailer. Um, in part because of the horrible way that it makes the tractors shake and wobble around. Um, I know it's just a physics thing and it's not ideal. Um, I've seen trucks pulling trailers like this before. I'm quite glad that the back attach does work properly for this. Um, it's not something that you would see commonly normally you would have a different type of trailer to actually go on you'd have a, a semi trailer on there rather than a tractor trailer uh, but it does work and so I think that we can um, we, we can go along with this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sell these beans and if you take a look at the prices here um, the beans okay when I looked earlier the beans there were 1,730 at the Maplefield Mill. Um, that was, although that was last night in games, in just 12 hours that has dropped by over $700. So now we want the right agribusiness and that is $1,500. I'm just getting rid of them as quickly as possible. So the right agribusiness, where is that? Um, let's bring that one up. That is the one up the top at Field 1. So we're going to have to dash up there as fast as we can. Um, sell these beans and then I'm whipping this trailer back down to the dealership and I'm getting rid of it and I'm getting a trailer to go with this one I don't know if I'll go with the cramp the um, I think if I pronounce it is it cramp or is it crampy um, I think it's just cramp um, the biggest trailer to go on to here I could get the next size down because everybody uses the cramp truck the, the cramp trailers um, but I I don't ever see the smaller one being used, so maybe we should use the smaller one this time, and um, we'll sort of we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. I'll decide when I get over to the dealership. I'll meet you up at field one. We can check on the how the ploughing is going, and we can sell these beans. I'll tell you what, this isn't bad. 12 miles an hour up this hill. I mean, I did have a little bit of a run up, but um, other vehicles that I've tried to come up here with a full trailer with have really slowed down and that includes the SX210 that I use currently in my time-lapse series. Uh, that one really really struggles coming up this hill um, especially when it's got the full trailer. I've, I've, I mean I do tow probably 20 yeah it's more than 20,000 litres more than what is in this one because it's a full 59,000 litres um, and so this lorry would probably slow down. Truck sorry it's truck this is the US uh, truck so yeah it, it would slow it down a little bit more but um, generally speaking I I'm more impressed with this one than I have been so far with the SX210 that I use uh, which is partly why I was talking in my last episode about getting rid of the SX210 and trying to get something what I feel is a little more suitable right come up here and get up on top I do find sometimes that the wheels will lift up into the air depending on where you are. I mean right there with the um, the back axle. But let's tip that out and sell. Let's see how much we get. So we had 30, what was it, 36,000 litres, something like that, um, of beans. I don't know why I bothered taking these all the way back down the bottom and then back up here again. 
Um, although to be fair, like I said, I was originally planning to sell these at Maplefield Mill and I would have gotten more than the 54,000. So there's $54,000 here. And now we've got wheat and Maplefield Mill is actually rising quite rapidly by the look of it at the moment for 53,000. So we're going to do that. I'm going to let's just quickly go to the tippers. Now we don't have anything in the mod section here for bigger tippers. Um, so we are going to be going for one of these. Now the crone there is 56,000. That's a tractor one. This one here is the big one that everybody uses at 59,000. And this one is on, ah, 47. If it was, if it was more than 47, I would have seriously have considered this Flegel. Um, but I feel that 47 is a little bit small. I wanted a decent upgrade. Um, and that's only an upgrade of 2,000. It's not really worth it, especially when you take into account the initial leasing costs. So it looks like we are actually going for the cramp, um, the bandit. I will meet you down at the dealership where we can get our new trailer and then we will load up the wheat that we've got in storage and we will take that over in order to sell it. Right, we are actually running out of time. Um, so I don't think really I've got time to get this trailer, get over, load the wheat and get it to the sell point because we're going to have to sell it through the train. So what I'll do is we'll just back in here and we'll return this trailer and then we will get the the cramp trailer um, so that it's all ready and then before next episode I will get it back to the yard and we will then see about uh, loading up the wheat and selling it via the train at the beginning of the next episode. Um, let me just return this one, there we go, and come over to the shop. So my weekly question this week is I'm going to be doing a week of forestry work at some point. I'm not quite sure when it'll be, but when I do do my week of forestry work, would you like me, right, let's just select that one, and eight and a half thousand. Uh, we just have to hope that we don't, what I'd like to know is per operating hour, is that while it's attached to a running machine or is that while it's got stuff in it? Because both could have a significant difference anyway um back out of there yeah so uh yeah do you want me when i do my forestry work do you want me to get a um a logging trailer that has an auto load script added to it to auto load some of the logs or would you like me to do it without using an auto load yeah there's various different options for loading logs it's not like it's going to completely limit us to not being able to do anything else um so it's your vote it's your game do you want an auto load logging trailer or not head into the comment section down below let us know why you're voting for the one you're voting for and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote by mousing over the screen in the top right hand corner and clicking on the little white circle um i am going to take this back over to the yard so that we can get it uh, loaded up and sell our wheat at the beginning of the next episode the plowing is continuing up in field one we've got that field to plant and then we've got all sorts of other tasks that we need to get on with as well including but not limited to buying some cows so if you've enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome but until next time thank you very much for watching this is Frithgar goodbye and see you later